Hi guys, welcome to Pokey Break Bros. It's just me today, Courtney, and that's because this is the first episode in our cosplay segment for our channel. I am so excited to be bringing you guys Pokemon cosplays, and I cannot wait for you guys to see the first one. I will be bringing you guys with me every step of the way, showing you guys how I make my cosplays, how I do certain uh, things such as foam crafting, making animal ears, animal tails, some FX makeup, you name it. I'll be showing you guys each step of the way. Um, be sure to stay tuned to the end of each of these cosplay videos for a special little bit. I had to get Matt involved somehow with these, so him being a graphic designer, there's a fun little part at the end and I think you guys will enjoy that. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi everyone. So as you guys just saw, we are doing Jigglypuff for our first cosplay. Very, very excited for this. So this is everything that I have so far for what I envision for Jigglypuff. So for Pokemon cosplay, really it's very um, how you see the Pokemon as a person. So, you know, there's no wrong way in doing it. Which is great, you know, it lets you kind of use your creativity and go with it. I have organza, I'm gonna make a dress. I'll take you guys step by step with that, show you guys what I do. I have shoes here and socks, I'm gonna paint the bottom. Um, I'll let you see what technique I use. Um, these are both from Forever 21, you can get stuff at a really cheap discounted price on sale on their website um, and just get it delivered to their store. Always a good option. This here, it's just a speaker, but it's always good inspiration. Great for playing music while I work. Then I have my lovely pink wig that needs to be styled. Already parted it to the side. Um, Gonna call her Tallulah. She looks like a Tallulah. Obviously, need to cut the tag off, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but yeah, that's everything I have, and uh, we'll get started. Starting with the shoes, you can see here I am taking painter's tape and uh, not cutting, but tearing it into pieces to cover the part of the shoe that I do not want to get paint on. For these shoes, that's the velvet part. You can use painter's tape in that way for any type of you know shoe or anything else that you're painting and you don't want to get the paint onto certain portions of it. So once I get the paint all the way around, I will start off with a primer, specifically the Mod Podge that you see sitting on the table there. Once it's completely covered in tape, like I said, you need to prime the surface first. I'm using Mod Podge here for the primer, and that's basically just so that the paint adheres better to the surface. Uh, typically, I do about three to four layers of Mod Podge, depending on what it is, in order to prime the surface, and I have to let it dry completely. Sometimes that's overnight. Now onto the wig. Here you just see that I am taking water and adding it to the new part that I made in the wig. 
and then drying that with a blow dryer to make sure that new part stays in place. And that's if the wig will stay in place for me. Now that I have that fully formed part, I am going to take those front bangs and start giving them that jiggly puff poof. So I need to add a lot of volume here. So I'm teasing layer by layer, adding hairspray and then drying that hairspray while holding the hair up to give it that added volume. Really, this part takes a lot of just messing around with the wig until you get it exactly how you like it. I really want to make the wig a little lighter color. Thinking about adding some watered down acrylic to it, uh, especially to get the curls to stay. Um, I add acrylic sometimes to clothing. Uh, watered down acrylic to clothing just to get certain colors the right tone um, so I'm thinking about adding it to parts of the wig I did it on a Halloween wig before so I'm thinking about doing it to this one so that's that uh, you'll see how it goes the ears we're going to cut the shape out from foam this is just regular two millimeter thin craft EVA foam. You can use Warbler. Um, it's much more expensive though. That's why I use foam for everything. We always buy a big roll of foam. Um, we use this for many cosplays. So that's why I use foam. And then we're going to cover it with fur and cut it to make it more realistic looking. And then the reason why this is here is for shading so you'll see that whole process and to shape this in the shape that we need I'm using a heat gun this is my heat gun I use for all my cosplays so if you don't have a heat gun you can always try doing a blow dryer on the hottest setting um, sometimes don't get those don't get very hot uh, just make sure guys if you're younger Use parent supervision, especially if you're using something like a heat gun. These get very, very hot. Okay, be careful. All right, so let's get started because I am super excited. Um, <laughs> there is a part that I will be talking about for this. It's not just cutting. There is a part where I will have to use um, a razor to, like an electric razor to, um, get the back part of the ears even when trimming so I will have to find Matt's electric razor he's not here right now so we'll see how that goes he will come home to finding pink fur in his razor hopefully I don't break it let's get started on to the ears now. So as I said before, here I am just using that thin two millimeter foam. I have cut out an additional kind of wedge or triangle from that initial ear shape I had in order to make the ear curve into the shape I want it. I then trace that shape onto my fake fur swatch so I know what to cut out. Prior to gluing, that ear piece together. And then once I have that all glued together, I can then start hot gluing the pieces of fur that I've cut out onto that ear piece. Uh, what you won't see here, which I didn't have time to tape unfortunately, was that front part 
that you see in my final video that has black in front of the ears is just another piece of foam. It's just a piece of black foam. You can use white foam as well and just paint it black. Either way, it works out perfectly fine. And back to the wig again. I actually realized there was a hole in the bottom of my wig stands or my foam wig heads uh, to put on a stand, which I never realized before because I never took the tag off. So that was a new, new discovery for me. But here you can see I'm starting with the paint now. For the back, I am adding watered down acrylic and to the hair at the base of the wig, pretty much going curl by curl. Uh, I'm painting it in with a brush and then uh, a paintbrush to be specific, and then brushing it through the hair with a comb, and then holding each curl in place as it dries so that I can get the look I want and have nice smooth curls in the wig. Really, it's a pain to do and it's a long process, but it was worth it in the end because I love how the wig turned out. have to apologize you won't see the final wig here but you will see it at the end of the video all right hi guys so bottom of the shoes are finished last you guys saw I was doing the layers of Mod Podge for kind of priming the area so it looked like this color the brown um, it was very slick rubber so now, as you can see, I added, after doing three layers of Mod Podge, I then did about five of acrylic paint. So it's just basic acrylic light pink color. Um, and as you can see, it looks much better. <laughs> At least to me it does. It's gonna go a lot better with the whole outfit than that brown color is going to. Um, my preference is I'm gonna take the laces off as well and get light pink laces. So it just lightens up the whole velvet portion of the shoe, um, brings out more of the lighter tones. Uh, more of my preference as well. So now that we have finished a few other things, it's time to start the dress portion. So when I first sketched what I wanted for the dress uh, for Jigglypuff. It was basically a baby doll style dress and then a very poofy short skirt. Um, when I looked up tutorials on how to make it, um, I got tutorials for a famous Instagram dress called a Selkie dress. Um, I had no idea what that even was, but that was basically every tutorial I was getting when I searched for that. So that was what I based this dress off of. Uh, I used two tutorials mostly when making this for reference. I'll link them down below so that you know <laughs> what I used. Um, and that way I give you know credit to the two YouTubers who are really, really great for explaining how to make this. I am new to sewing. I'm 
taught myself when I first got this about a year and a half ago. So not professional sewer by any means. I've never actually made a whole entire dress. Made like tank tops, skirts, um, altered a lot of clothing for cosplays, but not constructed an entire dress from scratch. So this is new for me. Organza is a new material that I have not worked with before. So I'm excited to get started. Um, I used my own measurements to make a pattern from computer paper, not pattern paper. This is what I had lying around. I know, professional, right? <laughs> so, made my pattern pieces, cut out the fabric from the pattern pieces. Um, like I said, organza, this is two layers of it, very sheer material, see-through. So I had this lying around from other cosplays, so this is gonna be my, um, not base piece, but a lining, my lining piece to make it not sheer and not see-through. So pinning the first few pieces together and we're gonna get started. My circle skirts are over on the couch. They're a little too massive right now to put on the table, but yes, we're gonna get started. We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed, guys. I'm gonna need it. And now I am getting to finally sew my dress, my main portion for this cosplay. And I have to say, this portion took me the absolute longest for all of the parts of this cosplay, even the wig. And I was very afraid to start on this. Even having sewn before, like I stated, never sewn a dress and this was a little intimidating, but it looked like a dress, it fit, and it didn't fall apart. And that was the main goal here. Right, a quick break from sewing and on to the choker. So I made a very, very simple choker. I only used simple ribbon, hot glue, and double-sided Velcro. I took two pieces of ribbon, I flipped them over and glued them together to form the bow portion. I took a single length of ribbon and measured it around my neck to see how long I needed that piece, cut it, glued the bow onto that, and then put the double-sided Velcro under the bow to hide it. Very simple, very easy. You can make most chokers like this.
this was my last bit of sewing where the dress, uh, the bodice of the dress and the skirts were finally made. They just needed to be connected to each other. So it was the final stretch. For Jigglypuff's microphone, I only took a large black marker, covered that in two millimeter foam for the bottom portion, and then wedged the cap of the marker into a large styrofoam ball uh, to get the shape that you see here. I cut that styrofoam ball um, down with a knife, being very careful and then used sandpaper to sand it into that refined shape you see here. And then now I am covering it in Mod Podge, again as a primer before I use acrylic paint to paint the top that green color. And then I'm gonna use uh, FX Cosplay Paint to paint the foam, which you will see here in just a minute. This is that FX paint I was talking about. It can be a big lifesaver, especially when painting foam, um, foam that you think might bend or crease. I was a little worried I was going to be gripping this a lot, so I didn't want um, whatever paint I used to crack. So figured using the FX paint would be a big saver in the long run. So it's finished. This is the final version of a Jigglypuff microphone. I have to say, I really like how it turned out and I can write on people with it. It's the best part. So. put it here so I realized I also did not show you guys the final versions of the wig and the dress you saw me making them but not the final version so let's start with the wig Ooh, I don't drop Tallulah so Tallulah turned out very nice so the last you saw I was working on the curls so watered down acrylic paint, um, brushed it through the curls, held them in place while they drew, drew, dried. Um, kind of curl by curl was a long process, but again, liked the finished product. It's a little lighter uh, throughout, which I wanted to go along with, you know, the lighter ear colors and the dress have that nice jiggly puff poof. Again, you saw me teasing um, layer by layer uh, that hair in the front to get that volume. I sprayed it to get it to stay. And then the final um, top is again, a mixture of the acrylic paint, a watered down, and I did some watered down Mod Podge to get it to really hold in um, with that swirl. And also the ears, which I really, really like. Um, it's that foam again. Um, you can tell it, there's some shading. That's just eyeshadow. Eyeshadow for the shading. Uh, the fur again is this fur here. It's just a swatch of fake fur glued on, trimmed down, and then to get it more even, an electric razor. Matt did find pink fur in his electric razor. And I got yelled at from the other room. 
So, turned out great. I tried it on. It fits wonderfully. And I'm very excited. All right, and last but not least, I don't want to knock these over when we bring in the dress. So, the dress. You guys saw me sewing it. Oh, it doesn't fall off the hanger. All right, final product for the dress. Ta-da! Turned out very nicely. I'm very excited. On the hanger, you can't see, but it has a very nice poof to it the bottom um, when I put it on it's much it sticks out a lot more and gives it that really big poof um, and of course this the choker so I'm very happy with all this we're gonna go put it all on I have my contacts in very very excited for these so we're going to go put these all on with the shoes that are over there right now. And the next time you see me, I will be Jigglypuff. And I will sing you to sleep, my dears. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you like this video as much as I loved wearing and making this cosplay. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to let you guys know when we post our next video. I hope you guys have an amazing day and stay Pokemon perfect. Love you guys.